This week, we interview not one, but two Jeffs, Jeff Frisk and Jeff Pike from the SANS GIAC program will be here to tell us all about certifications. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, security news this week, we'll cover how to plan for Hacker Summer Camp. And one of Larry's favorites, of course, document metadata will be discussed in this episode. And Linux Mint's not-so-fresh outlook on security, all that and more. So stay tuned. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the cocktails flow steady. It's Paul's Security Weekly. Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. The SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit sans.org to explore the full curriculum and latest training offerings. Onapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP and Oracle business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on the web at onapsis.com. Pony Express. Check out their line of penetration testing devices, including the Pone Pad, the Pone Phone, and the Pone Pro. For enterprises, there's Pone Pulse, providing continuous visibility into wired, Wi Fi, and Bluetooth spectrums across all physical locations, including remote sites and branch offices. For all those hard to reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at ponyexpress.com. And here's your host. Yeah, that guy. Nice shirt. Hey, thanks. What a fun. Uh, it's Paul Asadorian. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everyone to Security Weekly. This is February 26th, uh, 25th even, uh, 2016. I have with me in studio none other than the lovely Larry Pesci. Oh, what? Where? Lovely. You're, you're lovely. Lovely. You are. Wh wow. You're looking lovely. As always, Larry. No, I didn't say you uh, smell lovely. Okay. No, right, don't go that far. Just check. Just On check. the lines via Skype, Mr. Michael Santarcangelo is here with us. Welcome, Michael. It's always nice to be here, yeah. Especially with lovely Larry. Yes, lovely Larry. That's your new nickname now. I wow. like how I did that, huh? Wow, that's that's better than Harry Larry. So I guess <laughs> it is, it is true. Well, that's your drink is the Harry Larry, right, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, exactly. which is lovely Larry. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Lovely, lovely Harry We're just off to a well. fabulous start. I want to remind everyone to go to InfoSec World 2016, returning to Disney's Contemporary Resort on April 4th through the 6th. Uh, through the sixth even. Why am I getting, I'm mixing up my year is bleeding into my days. What is going on? I don't think that's what's bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, there'll be lots of talks and things happening there. Uh, I'll be there. I'll be giving a talk. And... I also submitted, speaking of conferences, to B-Sides Boston. Did you submit to B-Sides Boston? Not. There's still time. You should submit. I think I, I, think I have a Where are you going to be May 21st? I, uh, I think I have a conflict with that one. That's Where? What is your conflict? I don't remember. Blow it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably Sands. Yeah, get right on that. <laughs> <laughs> Blow it off. Come to B-Sides Boston with me. You've, we've never been to a conference in Boston together, dude. Mm -mm. We've been to conferences all over the world together, but never Boston. And we're like... An hour away, dude. Dude, I, we live forty-five minutes away from Josh Wright, and I cart things to Vegas to give to him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is very true. No, but I submitted <coughs> to uh, to B sides Boston. Uh, I haven't gotten the official word back, so I hope they accept my proposal that I I wrote when I had a couple cocktails the other night. That, rem that reminds me, DefCon. Send. <laughs> it reminds me, DefCon CFP. Need dude, more, have a couple cocktails. of drinks and then write. I'm telling you. I think it's going to work out for me. I don't know, though. But that, I'm telling you, a couple cocktails. How many kids you got now? Uh, <laughs> two and, and one on the way. Have you said that many? Wait. Yeah, a couple, couple cocktails. cocktails like and hey, Wait. congratulations. We're pregnant again. <laughs> 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 Funny how that works. Uh, oh, boy. Well, 
Oh, and of course, I forgot to put our guest bios in the notes. So now you're just going to have to tell us who you are. Uh, Mr. Jeff Pike <coughs> is on the lines via Skype. Jeff, welcome to the show. Why don't you give uh, people a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm, I'm Jeff. I'm Director of Technology at GIAC, and I'm responsible for building the exams. Excellent, ex excellent. Mr. Jeff Frisk is also on the lines via Skype. Jeff, welcome to the show. Hey, Paul and Scary Larry or Harry Larry. Good to see you guys. <laughs> um, both uh, Mr. Pike and I started with GIAC around 10 years ago, within a, kind of a few weeks of each other, oddly enough. And uh, we like to hire people named Jeff here at GIAC. So if there's anybody out there with the first name of Jeff, you know, you get preferential treatment for GIAC job placement here. But um, I'm more of an operations director for GIAC, been the director of the program for about 10 years or so. And Pike and I kind of handle both those sides of the house, technical and, and operations stuff. So thanks for having us, Paul. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for being on the show. Uh, I do have to start out with the question that uh, you know we talked about earlier in preparation for this interview in a question that I get asked and we all get asked on the show all mm -hmm. the time. Is certification worth it? Why should someone go get a certification? What does that mean for their career? Yeah, it's totally not worth it. Don't do it. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> we no. can edit that out, Jeff. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you're doing is you're going to force him to Facebook now so people will like him and give him the new like heart emoji and he feels better about himself. That's you right. Know? That's right. If, if only I was on Facebook, that'd be an awesome plan. <laughs> See? <laughs> all right. There's your um, excuse. Get on Facebook so I can heart you, Jeff. So you can feel yeah, better. Right. <laughs> you can love me in person, Paul. <laughs> That's that true. Of the week, man. So I think certification means different things for different people. And, you know, Pike and I probably have different, uh, you know, opinions on, on that or, or different viewpoints. But I guess for me, since a lot of the times people take SANS training and then, you know, do a GX certification that kind of corresponds to the same skill sets and knowledge areas and things, one one thing that I've heard from people a lot, and I know from my own personal experience, it kind of rings true, is if you take a course, whatever it be, um, you know, whether it's in college or post-grad or even continuing education stuff or SANS training, a lot of times people take those books and put them down and they, and they sit on your desk or on your shelf somewhere. And I think one of the big benefits of, of doing a GX certification, um, you know, after SANS training or, or aligned with that is it really forces people to pick the books back up and go through the hands-on lab exercises and things to really prepare you for more real-world scenarios and kind of where the rubber hits the road and what you have to do. Um, so that's one of the primary ones for me, you know, is it's a real tool to enforce and reinforce ongoing learning and really building those hands-on skills. And I think, you know, secondary for me, um, certifications tend to give people a little bit more confidence sometimes if you realize you can take a task, you know, do some hands-on exercises and then really put the, um, you know, money where the mouth is of showing that you have some demonstrable InfoSec skills. Uh, you know, those two things for me are, are two of the reasons, I guess, kind of in addition to maybe getting, you know, raises or promotions or being considered, you know, for a job. It's definitely not the, uh, you know, primary driver, you know, skill yeah. set. I'm glad to hear you say that, Jeff, and I like your first two points uh, quite a bit because I think a lot of people, they do it backwards, right? They're like, well, if I get this, sir, I have letters after my name so I can get a job or get a promotion, and that's, I, I, you know, that's not the primary driver, like you said. I mean, I, I agree with the way you, you kind of uh, organized that train of thought. Cool. Mike, what do you think? So, so for me, you know, kind of building on your first point, um, back when I was a cert hound and collecting a whole bunch of certs, one of the great things I, I thought about it was I can learn the, you know, the concepts I was taught in the class. I can actually do the stuff. So it's not just a few letters that go after your name, but you can, you know, you can show your boss, hey, look, I can do this stuff. You can show every, everybody. And um, I think the skill building part of it, um, especially because SANS is famous for the fire hose method of instruction, you know, where SANS blasts, you know, all this information at you and you're, you're lucky, you know, it's like drinking from a fire hose. Um, you're lucky to retain a little bit of it. That, that's a big one. Another big one for me too, is it tends to be, I think it tends to be more relevant um, in many ways than other credentials. And I'll, I'll say, you know, I'll just throw out there, you know, college degrees, you know, we can throw that out there. People get college degrees, but they become dated over time. And, you know, a guy like me, if I was to have a college degree, when I would have gotten it, it would have been a quarter of a century ago, you know, 
where was our field a quarter of a century ago? You know, didn't really exist. You know, Symantec wasn't even selling antivirus then. Um, so you can look at, at what somebody did recently. What did you learn recently? You know, and it's not as long a curriculum as a, as a college program. But an, another thing too, college programs are just starting to catch up and they're, they haven't really caught up yet. Um, at GIAC, we, we kind of drink, and at Sands, we drink a lot of our own Kool-Aid. We like it, we think it's good. Um, last time we were interviewing people, we opened it up and said, we're gonna interview some folks that may not necessarily have GIAC certifications. They had bachelor's degrees in information security or something like that, at least. And um, after doing that, we understood why we preferred to interview people with certifications. You know, some of the people were just not getting real hands-on knowledge. I mean, it's just, you know, really kind of like in Sam's terms, you know, 301 level stuff in their um, information security curriculum at school. Um, tell me about the uh, these digital badges. What are digital badges? So that's something that we started to do at the end of last year. And although GX not, you know, the best marketers around, one of the things we tried to do is to maybe move a little bit away from just having a paper cert hanging on the wall that has, you know, a, a signature on it and, and some stuff. The main thing about digital badges is it's a digital representation or an online representation of everything that would be uh, evidence for a credential, if you will. So showing that you have a skill set and also showing maybe what date you earned the certification, when it's valid and to and being able to tie it back to a specific individual. So it kind of augments the piece of paper, the certificate that you get in the mail that you can hang on your wall to be a little bit more online representation of that same kind of thing. The, the other thing that it does is people can use them, you know, tied to their LinkedIn profiles or Facebook pages, and it gives employers and other people in the industry kind of like a one-click verification so that instead of having to take a picture of someone's certification or look it up online, you know, you can directly associate a specific human to the skill sets that they've earned, uh, you know, with GSEC certification stuff. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> does it have like a, a code on it or something that ties it back to the person or is it just like a generic badge? Yeah, you know, I guess the way it looks it kind of physically represented it is, is just about like one of the cert logos that we have, but there's metadata included in there and, and then it's verified on uh, the, the Acclaim website who, who is our partner doing that kind of stuff. So everybody has a unique uh, badge and a unique identifier and once you get the public viewable link, you can include that. So instead of just looking at your badge, you know, it's kind of a logo type of thing. You can click on there and it brings you right back to the page to show, uh, you know, who you are, uh, what skill sets you have. And we've expanded some of the evidence sections that they have in the digital badging platform as well. So within the SANS and GX eco ecosystem, it kind of throws links and points to if people have published papers, gold papers associated with it, other certifications. Um, so you can gotta get, get a complete picture of someone's skill set and, and kind of what they're doing in a digital environment. Now, uh, Jeff and Jeff, I'm uh, kind of showing when I got my certifications, there was the option to get a gold certification and write a paper. Is that still true today across all certs or like how has that changed over time? Yeah, it totally is. I can let Pike speak to that one a little bit. He, okay. He's more of the gold master on that side. But I think for us, you know, it's kind of like supersizing the certification that you have. So if you kind of show the basic skill sets, the GI Gold program is a great way to demonstrate some additional hands-on skills. But Pike, I know that's more your area of expertise. So why don't you take that one? Sure. So yeah, we still offer the gold um, certification as an option. Lots of folks still um, write they do gold projects for the STI master's program. And, um, you know, we did a, some research uh, before where we, where we showed an interesting, uh, interesting sort of correlation between success on the GSE and people that had, um, did gold projects. I know we'll probably talk about the GSE a little bit later, but um, really the, the reason somebody would do a, a gold project is to show that they can do a deep dive into something that's relevant in information security and get a published paper, which is a little something you can put on your resume and GIAC gold status. Um, you know, one time I was talking with, with Steve Sims and, you know, he, a lot of people, you know, 
newer people now don't know what GIAC Gold is. And somebody w was uh, interviewing when he worked at Wells Fargo and uh, he asked him, said, well, you have these GIAC certs, are any of them gold? And um, he said, he said, uh, no, I didn't know anybody knew what that was. And Steve said, well, I know what it is. And Steve didn't hire the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a few people, folks still know what that is. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's an additional layer of street cred, I think. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think it shows a, a willingness to kind of go that extra mile in your certification, which means hopefully in your professional career, you're also willing to do the same. Um, what's it like trying to control any kind of uh, copyright or plagiarism uh, inside of the papers? Um, actually, I'm not too involved in that part. I know they do they do searches on it, and um, you know it's it, we. I mean, we're known to revoke people's certifications for plagiarism, so I don't think it's a huge problem. Um, something comes up every now and then, but. Um, it's the, it's the easiest way to, 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 in fact, lose your certification, right? right and right, I know they yeah. have pretty in-depth algorithms. You know, it's funny when people try to pull a fast one one way or another with either plagiarizing on a gold paper or, or you know, doing uh, less than, you know, good actor things on, on GX exams and with the SANS ecosystem part. You know, we have a pretty in-depth uh you know, data analytical approach and forensics mm. and things. So it's not necessarily in our specific wheelhouse w with Pike and myself here, but relying on the larger kind of SANS group and, and GIAC group, we have a lot of technical folks on our side. And, um, you know, I'm not challenging anybody out there, but, you know, because you'll <laughs> yeah, yeah, play away. We'll see what happens, right? <laughs> right, right. But, you know, I, I guess it's something that we hold ourselves in pretty high regard to be able to tell if you're poaching someone else's work or, or, or whatnot, you know. A lot of the folks doing the gold projects now too, they're, uh, you know, now that they're not required of everybody, the people actually want to do it. And, you know, they, yeah, they tend to I produce see. a little bit more original work mm -hmm. than was back in, you know, say 2005, 2004, when everybody had to, had to write a uh, paper. And that was the time of the uh, 130 page papers. Mm -hmm. I remember those days. I remember th I wrote one of those. Fun yeah. stuff, fun stuff. Yeah, I wrote cool. one too. Yeah. I, I wrote one after wrote the 130 two. page paper was rescinded. Yes. And I submitted it and was told this paper is too long. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was. You're too thor thorough there, Larry. I submitted yeah. it anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was one of the guys that wrote into Steven and said, oh man, that's a shame that you, uh, you know, you're not requiring those anymore. But he said, well, you can still maybe write one if you want to. And I was like, no, that's okay. I'm yeah. not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned about talking out of both sides of my mouth real quick. There you go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> tell me about the, uh, the CERT renewal program. I know some people will ask me that, uh, and I just haven't been, <coughs> excuse me, been, uh, close to it for some time. Uh, so once you achieve a certification, and then once you achieve a gold certification, you know what? How long is it good for, and what's the renewal process like today? Cool. Thanks for that question, Paul. You know, I, I know when we sent out some tweets letting people know we were going to be on here, a lot of the questions that came in uh, centered around some of the changes that we recently made to our cert certification renewal or recertification program. So uh, back in the day when Pike and I kind of started out doing this, there was only one way to renew a certification, that was to take the test again. And you know, it was pretty easy on us because we didn't need any additional full-time people to, to manage all that. But we moved away from that a number of years ago to take a more industry kind of standard approach using CPEs and other kinds of continuing education uh, to, to be able to renew a certification. So the GX certifications are good for four years. You earn one, and within that four-year period, what you do is you can take uh, part in various activities and add up CPE points. And we have a little bit different approach than other industry certifications. Instead of having to submit different points every year and, and getting CPE points for maybe some less meaningful activities like signing up for a magazine or something, we, we try to center the GX CPEs on, on things that are actually going to um, add value to people's lives. And Kind of one facet of that is the SAN side of it. You know, you can take another SANS course or other approved um, industry courses. And 
one of the things that we've really recently expanded is enabling people to take like a you know a little bit lower cost option. We all know SANS is great high quality training, albeit a little bit expensive. People's travel budgets are getting cut and things like that. So um, I know you guys were talking about B-sides and, mm -hmm. and things like that before. We've really expanded the uh, amount of CPEs people can earn for, for things like that to be able to add up the 30, 36 CPE or continuing education credits that you need once every four year period to um, be able to do that. So uh, what kinds of things can people do to earn CPEs? Like can they, uh, and we get asked this question all the time because we're producers of content, right? So a lot of people ask us, hey, do I get CPE credits for that? And I'm like, I have no idea. For, <laughs> for, the, for IC, ISC squared, you can get Right, Credits and it's different depending state. on which certification that exactly. you have. Exactly. So for GAC, though, like, could they listen to this podcast? Could they tune into a webcast in order to earn CPE credits? And what are some of the ways outside of SANS to earn those credits? Yeah, it, that's a great question, too, because we know, you know, that the SANS ecosystem offers a number of ways in there. And currently, some of the webcasts, I know that SANS does or SANS sponsors, you can get automatic CPE credit for if someone signs up for it through their SANS portal account and automatically tracks on that side which is another kind of great thing that we've changed pretty recently is keeping track of some of our own bookkeeping so that people don't have to do that. Um, right now, we typically kind of require something like a certificate of completion or some kind of proof that someone watched something. I could sure work with you guys and talk to you offline later about what we would have to do to, to be able to have people get credit for um, you know the Security Weekly uh, webcast and podcast that, that you guys do. Um, you know, that that's for sure a good idea. And it's a way to add together some kind of hour long chunks of stuff to, to add up. But a, a couple of the other main categories that we've recently expanded, one of them that you talked about was earning a, a GAC gold kind of add on to, to the base credential, taking that action in and of itself and earning a GAC gold designation is something that can fully renew uh, a, a paper. But I guess outside of other kind of SANS paid opportunities, to get to that magic 36 number that you need once every four years, we've uh, recently expanded the continuing education option to be up to 12 points, or, or sorry, 18 points for that, up from 12. So things like, um, you know, B-side events that, that you referenced or RSA coming up, if you're going to RSA talk, those are automatically tracked and kind of ported over to the SANS portal and GAC portal system there, um, short courses, and then the community participation is something you can get 12 CPEs for. And that would be, um, you know, if you're participating in like uh, local chapter events and, and things mm -hmm. like that, or even doing work on the, you know, GAC advisory board or working with us to write exam questions, you can get 12 points for things like uh, net wars or other kind of cyber ranges. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be centric inside the SANS ecosystem. I know a lot of the government employees or DOD people like that a lot because there's cyber range uh, activities or opportunities there. And then you can get 12 points for something as basic as work experience. If you've been working in the industry and you can you know, tie your resume back to job functions that you have that relate back to certification areas. So what we used to do is kind of limit that where you can only earn uh, you know, a little bit less than the required 36 points to, um, from some of those what I'll call maybe piece together activities or, or things that aren't just going to training for a whole week. But with the additions that we have of tw uh, 18 from the continuing education, which is broader with industry events and ShmooCon and DEF CON and Black Hat and things like that, in addition to 12 for community participation, up to 12 for like net wars or cyber range stuff, and then 12 for work experience. People have a real opportunity to get like up to 54 CPE points, you know, which are really little or no cost that don't really involve travel or anything else either. Very cool. That's awesome. Very cool. And Jeff, yeah, and you guys had mentioned that you were doing a lot more uh, sort of accounting in-house. Um, all of the opportunities that you guys are already are getting. So if I were to take a class, say, at the ICS Summit last week, um, you guys have a record of that. And I can apply those CPEs to a future uh, renewal, correct? Yeah. That, whoa, we got some miscellaneous music. Yeah. Wow. Sorry. Larry, you're working that out for us. I got to get my water bottle and my ecstasy. Some sound <laughs> like, nice. Pacifier. <laughs> so the the kind of tracking question that you brought up is a really good one. You know, before these recent program updates that went out the door uh, at, at the end of last year, like December, we were really leaving it up to people's own kind of recognizance to track all your own stuff and put some time limits on when people could do stuff. A couple specific changes that we made at the end of last year, which are in full force now, um, one being that 
instead of having to track your own stuff with inside the SANS ecosystem, you mentioned the ICS summit or other things, even some of the short courses that I know we're doing at RSA or of course, full blown, you know, SANS conferences and things. All of that is now automatically tracked in people's portal accounts. So if you do anything within the SANS ecosystem, we keep track of that and those will show up in your GEC account. And as you said, we currently count things for the whole four year cycle of your certification, like validity period. So that if you take some training or piece together, you know, uh, different kinds of ICS summit things or other summits or short courses or even SANS webcasts and things like that, um, we can piece that together for you and automatically track that. There's kind of a two step process, one being that you have events or activities that are in the system and you can, of course, um, input other things too from these other categories that we talked about and you can input them and then track them yourselves the sand stuff's automatically in there but what it does is if you have one certification or more than one certification it allows you to um, you know for lack of a better word assign or attribute those specific points to one or, or even more than one certification and so some of the things like uh, that also count is if you earn another industry certification like a CISSP or a CEH or an ISACA certification, um, those things count for, for full credit as well. Nice. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, Jeff and Jeff, um, if your certification has expired, like what happens? Is there like after a certain period of time, right, it's going to expire? Like is there a time where – could you still qualify to use CPEs to, to recertify it? Or like once it's expired, that's it? Like you've got to like basically do it again and then you kind of get on the CPE track? Like how does that work? That's a really good question as well. Um, and, you know, for us, we have a little bit of a grace period there where if it's expired pretty recently, you know, within a number of days or weeks or, or maybe even a month, we can work with people to, to kind of bring that online and extend people. I think our basic goal, one of the mindset changes for us is really trying to work to keep people in the family, you know, within the whole SANS and, mm -hmm. and, and GEAC world here. I think it adds a lot of value to have people stay current. And, and as Pike was mentioning before, instead of having your skill set get stale, you know, to, to, to be able to really add to that. If someone has an expired certification that they've held before and it's, you know, off the books for more than a number of months or a year or something, we do allow people some kind of grace period to get back in. But at that point, CPEs kind of no longer apply and you have to take the exam again. And, you know, I mentioned before when, when our program was kind of real young, the only way to recertify was to take the exam again. That really showed people knew what they were doing, but it got a little bit oppressive as far as making people go to proctor test centers, you know, more often, especially with multiple certs. So um, that is still an option for everybody. If anybody wants to renew, instead of earning continuing education points, to just go ahead and take the, the current exam again. Mm -hmm. um, that's an option. And for people that have expired certs that are getting back into the good graces of things, typically if it's been expired for a while, we uh, you know can honor the recertification uh, package to get people updated SANS courseware books, which is also a huge benefit of you know, keeping your certification current. Um, after four years, if you sign up for the certification renewal, whether you take the exam or you CPEs or whatever, you get a kind of free, um, you just get to pay shipping for an updated set of SANS course books. And so, um, taking the exam is the way if you're expired, but pretty quickly we can roll people back into that kind of CPE thing. Hmm. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so, so Paul and Larry, if yeah. you guys do happen to have expired certs. I do, right? which is why kind of why yeah, I asked. Yeah. Like they're really Let expired. Let us know though. And, and, and we can work with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Jeff uh, Pike, you said you do a lot of the technology uh, behind GEAC. Does that tie into uh, a lot of the on-demand uh, or virtual things, or is a lot of the technology just really like uh, test uh, tracking and things like that? Yeah, it's, it's more exam development. It's not so much with the on-demand. That's a whole other team of people within SANS that um, does that which I'm taking a SANS course right now through On Demand. They do a real good job, by the way. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we, we have all we can eat just to keep up to speed on, um, you know, the 30 some SANS courses that we offer certifications for. So um, it's, you know, it's technology in that way, but then there's also a part of it that's exam development and psychometrics. And um, we have to follow industry standard best practices and things like that. And Mr. Frisk does a lot of that with for us, you know, as far as um, 
paving the way with ANSI and, and working with them and making sure uh, we're up to speed and you know they change standards just like everybody else they recently rolled out a new standard and um we got audited against that and um you know Frist does a good job keeping us on top of that um, thanks Mike I appreciate that <laughs> yeah man uh what about the the GSC I remember when the GSC first came out like three people had it and it was like the most yeah. elite certification you could possibly imagine and I don't know, it required being locked in a hotel room for like two full days or something like that with no water or food. or It was like a survival and a, and test. A hot branding iron. Yeah, yeah, it involved all these things that I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do that now. But obviously, you, uh, GEC has grown the certification. So what's the GSE program look like today? Well, it's, it's interesting. And it, it um, all goes back to that, um, that time. You know, I remember... Also, when they posted to the web page that they had this GSE and they locked two guys in a room and, you know, they did this hands-on testing and they did all kinds of stuff for, I don't know how many days it was. It, you know, could have been, a, could have been six months they got those guys were in there and at the end of it. It gets they longer they every passed. time we tell the story, yeah, right? Yeah. It was like three yeah, days, a week, three weeks. It was a, a lightsaber duel, arm wrestling, yeah. Yeah, and they did so much stuff. Everybody was like, well, well, we didn't even think of that. We guess you passed. <laughs> but, um, you know, every time we've changed it, we, we occasionally still talk with those first two guys, um, John Jenkinson and Lenny Zeltzer. I was going to say, Lenny, and, Lenny Zeltzer was one of the first ones, right? Yeah, and we still talk with those guys when we change it, and we try to get it to where it can scale from beyond two people, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're currently at, a, at about 140. Um, you know, I don't know if we'll ever reach 1,000, but that would be quite a day if we, if we did. But we, we want to keep the integrity of it, of it high. And, um, you know, you don't have to be Superman to, to get it, but you've got to be pretty good. And um, we really consider it the premier certification in information security. It's the certification of certifications. It's kind of like a capstone. And, you know, from the day that, that it came out and that was posted to the SANS website, you know, some subset of people, and I was one of them, was like, man, I, I want it. I, I don't think I can do it now, but I want to try it. I want to work up to it. I mean, it's still, you got to have five prerequisites even yeah i was well, going to ask you so what are, so what are the if you want to go for your gse like where do you start and then ultimately where do you end up in terms of what you got to do so the three hard prerequisites are your are your gsec your cert security essentials your gcia intrusion analysis and your gcih your incident handling and uh, hacker exploits after hey, that hey, you can hey, do by, by hard, you didn't necessarily mean that it's the most difficult things, but those yeah. are the ones we're inflexible on, those core kind of components, yeah. right, uh, of security gotcha. essential stuff, intrusion analysis, and then incident handling. That's kind of the core foundation skill set that the GSE is mm -hmm. based on. Yeah, it, yeah, you know, not hard as in hard to do, but like anything else, you know, it's like everybody says this is easy or that is easy, you know, riding a unicycle is easy if you can do it. But... <laughs> But anyway, those are the, the core ones. I should have used the word core. But anyway, there's two other advanced ones, and you can pick what you want of those, or you can add on some gold projects. So really, you got to have five things. Mm -hmm. and, then you, and then at that point, you qualify for the multiple choice exam. You uh, turn in your application, and you can take the multiple choice exam. The specs are a little bit different, but it's pretty much like any other um, GIAC exam at a local Pearson Center. Um, it's open book exam. And then after that, you're qualified to sit the lab. And within roughly a year, we expect you to take the lab and we offer the lab in two places. We offer it currently in Orlando at the, in the spring and in, in Vegas in the fall. And the lab is a two day hands on lab. It's broken up into four sections. The first day is kind of some incident response and um, actually the first part of the first day is incident response, kind of some triage. And the second half of the day gets a little bit more into a fuller incident response. 
And then the second day consists of two sections with a battery of exercises from the different domains on the web page. So um, it's really kind of a defensive minded certification. You've got to have some defensive skills. Mm -hmm. It's not, you, you know, it's not hack the planet. Um, the other Jeff that's not here with us, he's got a quote that's pretty famous in front of, you know, among GIAC is like, yeah, everybody wants to hack the world, but nobody wants to configure IP tables. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's kind of true, and it's kind of true. And, and so we, we kind of keep that defensive mindset um, in the GSE. We think it's important, and um, a lot of the first um, GSEs that paved the way, they also think it's uh, important. And as, as you guys were saying, a lot of notable people have, have gotten it, you know, Steve Sims, Lenny Zeltzer, Eric Conrad, James Tarala, um, Craig Wright, Paul Wright, Mark Baggett, Don Seth Erdock. Meisner. Yep, Seth. Seth, yep. So, so a lot, lot of folks. Um, so, you know, it's something something that, that we take a lot of pride in. Um, Courtney Embert is actually in, in charge of the content development for that now, and she's doing a, a real good job. Um, it's a challenge to keep it fresh and the hands-on exercise is fresh, but we're, uh, we're keeping it updated and we've got a new version going out here in Orlando and mm. we're pretty excited about it. Cool. I think one of the things, I think one of the things quick that I've heard about it too, mm -hmm. is, you know, when people are kind of scared of it or it's all encompassing, or like you said, you lock for two days into a room, you know, mm -hmm. with Pike or, or with Blake or with Courtney or someone, uh, that it's fair right? It's hard, it's thorough, but even people that have come out of it and not passed or whatever else, you know, have all agreed that it's, it's a very fair assessment of hands-on keyboard skills, you know, based off that core curriculum. Yeah, that's a, thanks for mentioning that. That's actually something else I wanted to say to, you know, a lot of people at the end of it, they do tell us, yeah, it was tough, but it was fair. And, and we like to hear that. And, you know, one of the things that makes it tough is it's broad. It's, it's broad based. I mean, if we told you that there was a specific exploit that you were going to be tested on and that's it, you know, everybody would know it. Everybody, you know, whether they knew anything, how to do anything or not, they would learn that before coming into the, into the lab. So one of the things that makes it tough is it's really broad and, you know, nothing on it is hard, but there's stuff on it that a lot of people don't do every day. And so you're like, oh man, last time I did that was five years ago. I gotta, you know, rethink how to do that and work through it. And oh, by the way, the time's ticking. And with the time ticking against you, you know, there's only, you know, if you don't, if you don't know your stuff, you're gonna run out of time before you can do enough stuff to, you know, get over the bar. Things get ugly if I run out of time. <laughs> I get ugly hacks. And not like hacking it, but like ugly hacks to make stuff work. It gets ugly. And yeah. I that look back too, on man. it, I'm like, as long as it works, right? It does. And then I look back on it, I'm like, wow, that was ugly. <laughs> I think we refer to those <laughs> in the past as dirty, dirty loops. Yes. <laughs> like a loop I, and a shell I do a lot of dirty <laughs> loops. Yeah. You'd be right at home in the GSE lab with ugly. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, what are some of the new uh, GX certs that uh, you're developing? So we're developing a cert now for the uh, penetration testing with Python class. Mm -hmm. It's the GPYC. I call it, uh, different people call it different things. I call it the GPYC. But that thing's going out um, around the 1st of April. And um, we're, we're pretty excited about that. We've also got a cert that um, is coming out maybe the end of the third quarter for the um, forensics 585 class, the mobile forensics mm -hmm. class. And we've been working with um, Heather Mihalik on that. And um, she's pretty excited to finally have a cert for that course. A lot of folks have told her that, um, you know, they'd really love to take that course, but they're not able to because the, um, you know, GX not offering a cert for it. So we kindly finally reached critical mass there and we're, 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 we're working on something out. So those are the two things we have in the pipeline right now. And cool. one of the ones that came out, you know, pretty recently at the end of last year was the uh, continuous monitoring course, right? The, the, the GMON or whatever, I think that corresponds to the SANS 511. Is that right, Pike? Yeah, yeah, that's, thanks for mentioning that. That one is new. Um, 
you know, I, I forget about it because it, it, you know, it took us like nine months to have that baby. And, um, you know, it's been out since December. So really it's like a two or three month old, old baby, but yeah, we're, we're pretty excited about that one too. And we're glad to have that one. Is it, sleep, is it sleeping through the night? No, it, it is. Almost, it's, yeah. it's, it's doing it. It's, it's doing a good job. It's a, it's a good baby. We're happy with oh, it. Oh, that's good. That's cool. I hope I get one of those. Um, <laughs> so. Anything else uh, you want to tell our listeners about GIAC? I think one of the main things for me is just some of the changes that we've been going through in the past, you know, year or six months or whatnot is really to try to take a better step to be more like user friendly for people. You know, Larry, one of the things you mentioned about being able to track CPE points, you know, or um, get back into the good graces if people have expired certs and things like that we've realized that uh, we need to do a little bit better job communicating. You know, marketing's never been one of our strong points. And uh, if if anybody has, you know, questions or things that they think they can offer to make the program better or things they don't understand, I would totally urge people to get in touch with me. And my email address is jfrisk at gac.org. Um, Pike over here is, is you know, jpike at gac.org. So we're, we're really open to feedback. And our goal is to keep people in the family, kind of build the strong, you know, white hat type folks that make up our industry. We're, we're here to do the right thing and to expand people's knowledge and make sure people have the skill sets and the demonstrable skills and, and tools that they need to do their jobs. And so, you know, the, the main thing I think about the GIAC program, the difference from other certification programs is we take a real targeted approach. It's not the most cost effective way to have 40 certifications and you know eight people on our team uh versus the other way around but we we, we strive to make things matter in the workplace and to show that people have hands-on skills and skills that can actually show you do the job so very open to feedback if anybody has it for us are you jeff and jeff familiar with playing five questions on security weekly hit us up man all right i'm not but it sounds like fun okay because you're about to all right uh, well, this is going to be weird because you're both named Jeff. Okay. So, uh, Pike I wanna, and Frisk. Pike and Frisk. Pike, yeah, Pike you're up first. That's kind of how we roll, man. Uh -oh. Pike, you're up first. Three words to describe yourself. Oh, man. Three words to describe myself. Um, super freaking cool. <laughs> yeah. Super freaking cool. <laughs> Frisk, over to you. Three words to describe yourself. Uh, not quite as cool. <laughs> Frisk, if you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? Uh, denial of service. Pike? Oh, I get the same question. You get the same question, yes. Um, machete. Machete. Uh, Pike, if you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? That's a good title. Oh, man. This is, <laughs> you, got, you guys do test questions for a living, right? You can totally combine answers one and two to get answer three. I, I think it would... <laughs> I, th I think it would just be. Yeah. I think it would just be I with, uh. a, with, a, with a little I, and I would, you know, kind of you know, reflect on consciousness and some philosophical stuff in it and some stuff like that. Frisk, what would the title be of a book about you? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm not as deep as Mr. Pike over here. <laughs> I, maybe it would be that I showed up. <laughs> I showed up. Frisk, in the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? Oh, I'm a real ass grabber, man. I'll take first on that every time. Pike, first or second in the game of Ask Grabby Grabby? Oh, yeah, first. There you go. Uh, Pike, choose two celebrities to be your parents. Alive or dead. Fiction or non-fiction. Fictitious or otherwise. Um, I don't know. Let's go with um, Marilyn Mon Monroe, because she was hot, I guess. And um, how about John Wayne? Yeah. John Wayne. That would be pretty good. good, one. good Somebody's one. got mommy issues. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Frisk over to you. Yeah. Two celebrities to be your parents. Who would they be? Uh, like, no mommy issues. No mommy issues. I'm, I think I might have to say Darth Vader and Padma or, or something there. Very nice. <laughs> wow. Very nice. I always I, thought actually I, that's kind of. I was. I always thought of Darth Vader. Home, though, yeah, but well, I always thought of Darth Vader as like the worst dad ever. I don't know. 
Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> he he came around in the end, man. He did. Well, he, he did come around in the end. <laughs> At least it wasn't like Darth Vader and Leia, because that would be just creepy. <laughs> yeah, <that's weird>. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> well, Jeff and Jeff, thank you very much for appearing on Security Weekly. Of course, you can find about uh, everything about GIEC at GIEC.org, right? Did I get that right? Yeah, that's right, man. You got it. GIEC.org. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Larry. See you guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. With that, take a short break. Come back with security news, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. How do you like our new music? It's nice. Do you like that? Yeah, Santa, do you like that music, Santa Arcangelo? He's yeah, quiet over there. Man, I'm, I'm digging it. It's nice, right? He's got to be on some good drugs or something over there. He, does. he is. He's definitely. No, I should be, though. I'm fucking just swallowing ibuprofen and wondering why. Well, Jeff and Jeff, thank you so much, guys. Cool. All right. Thanks.